uh, transition methods and the arithmetic series also to be uh, following it. But what I want to put is that the rarest metals, bottom one, lanthanides, which I have shown here, and manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, are all very interesting element combinations. They all possess very good magnetic properties. You can make ferrite, ammonium magnet, rarest ammonium magnet, antiferromagnetic materials, n number of combinations you can make out of these two combination of uh, series, uh, rows and uh, very interesting combinations we can make. Now, why iron is magnetism? This is a simple question always we land up in the um, questions, uh, examination question. The electronic structure of iron, atomic number is 26. That means 26 electrons it has. According to the Bose atomic orbit and uh, Schrodinger's equation, if you look at it, how do we fill the electrons using Pauli's exclusion principle again? We have uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 4, 3d10. Up to that, 26 electrons can be filled. While filling it, you please remember that what I mentioned, Pauli's exclusion principle, that one spin up and one spin down, only to be filled in the first uh, level. Like that, each level when you fill, you have to do that exercise. And finally, you see that last 3D10 orbit when you go, energy level when you go, you see that spin up and spin down, and four unpaired electrons will be there. These four unpaired electrons contribute to magnetic moment of iron. Very simple calculation, simple explanation. Why iron is magnetism? You can take copper, for example, it's a diamagnetic. You can start filling up the electrons. We'll find that you'll be finding it paired electrons only you'll find in the orbits. That means it will not show magnetic moment. So you can do this calculation for each and every element in a periodic table and try to understand that what causes magnetism in an element in the whatever we have in the periodic table. <clears throat> now, the rare magnetism is very, very interesting and powerful. Um, uh, magnetic properties emerge out by the combination of rare earth and transition metal. I have put here all the rare earths which are all very interesting for applications, samarium, neodymium, dysprosium, like that. Transition metals like iron, cobalt, copper, manganese, they're all very interesting uh, elements. By combining these two one way or other, you can, for example, like shown here, how magnetism arises in samarium cobalt permanent magnets. It is a powerful champion magnet, rare earth magnet. It has very huge energy of uh, magnetic uh, force. It has, transition metal has 3D orbit, and uh, rare earth metal has four of contributions, electron contributions. So I'm trying to say that here, transition metal 3D electrons, and rare earth metals four of electron, they interact and contribute to what is known as rare earth transition metal magnetism. Very simple and giving explanation, but a lot of theories are behind it. If you look at it, cobalt, it is 27 atomic number. So you will find that there will be three unpaired electrons in the atomic orbit when you go filling it. Similarly, samarium has six unpaired F electrons. So you have a good combination of 3D unpaired electrons and four F unpaired electrons contributing to magnetism and very nicely you can make good rare earth permanent magnet by this way. Now rare earths uh, is why we call it the rare earths, because it has uh, electronic structure is very similar, all rare earths. So extraction procedure is going to be very complex, extracting it, each one is going to be a difficult task. That's why it's called rare earth. It's not rare, not available rare. Rare means it's not uh, available. Rare means it's a separation process, very complicated. And China has the major source. And uh, I have put a cotton here. Someone says that why it is rare, he's asking. Did you hear that China declared an embargo on the export of rare earths? Yes, the rare earth elements might actually become rare. This is a kind of uh, 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 in the cartoon joke on the meaning for rare. Rare is basically, if you look at it in the periodic table, they don't get respect. They are at the bottom of the periodic table, but uh, given unpronounceable names, 
like a prosodium etterbium even for me when i teach in the classes i find it very difficult to pronounce certain names by mistake and making it difficult so to students to follow it so the names are also unpronounceable names they are nowhere near the grammar and the quality that oxygen nitrogen carbon and other chart toppers do of course oxygen now is very important because pandemic situation but there is never had that popularity but i want to say that darat is the master of materials technology without that entire technology what we face in electronic technology or automotive technologies wherever you see the applications these are the players elements play a major role for really making a dramatic uh, benefits <clears throat> now all the audience were all fascinated with uh, fascinated with the magnetism i want to say that this cartoon the nation that controls magnetism will control the universe this is long back 1960s cartoon somewhere i pick it up uh, you can see that china uh, really lift the entire world because of its resources of rare earths and magnetism this is really a long back 1960 this was the cartoon the nation that controls magnetism will control the universe so that's a i think uh, uh, i mean not repeating the meaning of it now now the <clears throat> magnetic materials all of us physics we know that they are described by what is known as hysteresis curves hysteresis is nothing but in one axis one property will uh, go the other axis the property x axis the property another property will go both dependence will not be linear they will be non linear so you develop what is known as hysteresis so the hysteresis curves for ultra soft it will be very 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 tiny narrow curve not tiny it's a very very narrow curve uh, the y axis has magnetization or magnetic induction x axis will have field soft magnetic material the hysteresis will be slightly open for a semi hard magnet it will be widely open further for a hard magnetic materials permanent magnet rare permanent magnets and all it will widely open hysteresis will be bigger but at the same time there will be relatively decrease in the magnetization along the y axis and this uh, hard magnets are um, uh, uh, defined in terms of its energy stored in the curve what i have shown in the second quadrant curve green color you can see the rectangular curve it uh, explains that how much energy magnetic energy it can store that means if this area is very big that the material the magnet can store more energy then you will understand that the purpose of the more energy for application point of view later for soft magnet hysteresis will be very narrow that means the permeability m by h will be very high like uh, you are looking for alternative current applications like transformer core application other things you need to have soft magnetic materials or ultra soft magnetic materials so some examples i have given here uh, soft magnetic materials are iron iron based alloys hard magnetic materials uh, aluminum nickel cobalt ferrites rare earth permanent magnets like samarium cobalt neodymium iron boron magnets and all so this is some examples which i have given here the history is so please remember it he was the man uh, alfred james alfred he defined the history is in magnetic material 1881 in the they explain the magnetic behavior of iron now history says you can find in many subjects like electricity elasticity thermodynamics and all now this how the cow will look like magnetization history says cow only one cow i am showing it you have y axis uh, uh, b magnetic induction j or m we call it as magnetization and the x axis is the magnetic field applied field when you apply a field to the magnetic material the cow will start like this that means you will have domains start moving it is domain walls moving with applied magnetic field once it gets saturated with the domain becoming a single domain then you get a saturated magnetization value like this you get so the domains will start moving slowly with applied magnetic field the process domain walls will move in the direction of magnetic field or magnetic moments will move in the direction of magnetic field at the same time the domain wall will disappear slowly this is how the magnetization process it takes place 
you can see in a simple uh, cow, you have multiple domains and you apply a magnetic field, the magnetic moments all gets oriented in the direction of magnetic field. This is simple cartoon to explain in a single domain, magnetic moments, how it can get oriented. And we can have the domain wall process, how it goes. Single domain, if you apply a, a field, it protects coherently in the direction of field and become oriented along the direction of magnetic field. There are many ways the domain, multiple domain, single domain can be rotated with the applied magnetic field. When you have uh, the domain and domain walls, uh, the features in the material, like you have defects, you have uh, chemical inhomogeneity, you have uh, grain boundaries, all the things will interact with the magnetic domain wall when you apply a magnetic field. When you do this exercise of applying magnetic field and move the domain wall, it is going to see many of these uh, barriers. And these barriers will manifest the hysteresis curve, what I have shown in the previous one, and uh, manifest itself how your material is going to behave under the presence of many of these impurities. This is where the extrinsic properties like microstructure control, process control will help in improving certain engineering magnetic properties like coercivity. You want to increase the coercivity, you have to pin the domain wall. So to pin the domain wall, you can have many of these impurities present. We have a spectrum, wide spectrum of hard and soft magnetic materials. Soft magnetic materials, as I mentioned that, they have high permeability. Hard magnetic materials will have high energy product. The soft magnetic material, very low coercivity, I have shown here. The, don't look at it, uh, the entire spectrum of materials. Semi-hard, of course, they will have some coercivity. The hard magnetic material will have very high coercivity or high energy product, high energy storage capabilities. Now, permanent magnet. We all hear about the permanent magnet, which are all widely used in many of our day-to-day -day applications. Here is defined as most materials lose their magnetization when the external magnetic field is removed. We know very well. I, for example, pin, if I have a magnetic field, it gets magnetized. But once you remove it, it just loses its magnetism. But a material that remains magnetized, even in the absence of an applied magnetic field, after removing a magnetic field, is called a permanent magnet. This is called rare earth permanent magnet, give an example. Samarium cobalt, hard ferrite, sanchium ferrite, barium ferrite, aluminum nickel cobalt, all these things are all called permanent magnets. You apply a magnetic field, they get magnetized. So remove the permanent magnet field, still the magnetism remains in that. So the advantage of such use is that you can put this magnetized material in any device to tap the flex for certain actuating purpose some sensing purpose. So all these things are used to permanent magnets like uh, actuating, sensing, energy storing, many other applications like that can be used. We have uh, permanent magnets, many varieties, ferrites, metal magnets, rare earth magnets. I call this as the champion magnets, or e magnets, they call champion magnets. SMCO means samarium cobalt, neodymium, ND means neodymium iron boron, Again, samarium, iron, nitrogen magnets. Like that, we have multiple combinations of uh, direct permanent magnets are available. What is the advantage of a permanent magnet when it has high strength? I have put here the cartoon, uh, the ferrite. If you look at it, the red bar chart, red chart. This is the kind of energy, like energy it can store. Whereas if you go to aluminum nickel, slightly higher energy it can store. So go to samarium cobalt, this blue char bar, it can store more energy, magnetic energy. Whereas we go to neodymium iron boron, it can store much more energy. It's called champion magnet. So starting from ferrite, if you look at it there, the energy level the magnet can process, it really say, says that the neodymium iron boron magnet has the champion energy it can store. <clears throat> Advantage of that is that if this energy is high, you can minimize the size of the magnet that can be used in applications. That's what the top uh, figure shows. 
the size of the magnet size of the magnet how become how it becomes smaller this is really a boon for aerospace industries strategic sectors automotive industries because weight saving is an important parameter for efficiency so you can see that rare earth femur magnets whether it's a samarium cobalt or nadium and boron magnet it can really save weight and having very high magnetic energy product we should not forget the people who invented again the japanese uh, team uh, kato and uh, takeshi son from tokyo institute of technology 1930 they were doing some experiment uh, they found accidentally the balance was shifted when they came the next day morning and they found that the material which they were investigating has magnetism to oxides which they were working on and they found that it is magnetic ferrite they called as a ferrite magnet they discovered the ferrite magnet by accident then the ferrite magnet has lot of iron okay so this guy again uh, mishima from japan came up with the idea of uh, dispensing iron or working with less iron so he found a combination of very small iron nickel aluminum with a very high coercivity so this is uh, called alnico magnets of course later it has many varieties by adding titanium niobium many other additions it has many series of magnets so it has better than the ferrite in terms of the coercivity it has much higher coercivity then came the discovery of uh, the samarium cobalt magnets this is called strategic magnet 1966 sternot and his group from us air force materials laboratory they discovered this and uh, they found very high energy product energy product is defined as magnetic induction multiplied by h b and h how maximum in the rectangle area what i have shown in the history is a skull so this is defined as very high energy product rare permanent magnet in fact this discovery was termed as one of the 100 greatest moments in materials and engineering history around the world during 1966 of course there was no nobel prize for engineering side so this was discovered uh, recorded as one of the greatest moments in the engineering field then came the champion magnet the neodymium iron boron magnet this is the man dr sagawa son in uh, japan he was in sumitomo special metals group working 1982 he discovered what is known as neodymium iron boron magnet you can see that with 1 gram of magnet he can hold really 2000 grams of water bottle how weight he can can really show very small tiny one lifts this much magnet and we are working and i had an interaction when i was japan with the king we are uh, closely working almost uh, for certain uh, novel processing of this magnet in india for electric vehicle application probably because of the pandemic situation we could not uh, install that equipment in india now likely to be in 2022 he has uh, invented this magnet with a, a new process route he is calling as uh, ultimate rare earth magnet technology for electric vehicle applications so we are going to establish that this is the champion magnet and i had a chance to present uh, when i was in japan to my work on samarium cobalt and uh, the nadium and boron magnet to the nobel laureate professor roger uh, henry roger he was the inventor of uh, scanning tunnel microscope he was asking me a question about uh, uh, what is the future of this rare earth permanent magnet there was 2004 he mentioned it now 2021 after 17 years with the interaction of dr sagawa we are going to bring out what is known as uh, the 21st century rare earth magnet technology for future almost uh, we are going to say that magnet era rare earth magnet era it is going to be called so that's what i find that uh, the future is going to be a huge for magnet technologies for many applications so all these rare earth magnets have a crystalline structure of non cubic structure which really help uh, Uh, in terms of uh, applying a magnetic field in one particular direction so that it is magnetized in ec axis then difficult to rotate it to the hard axis 
which results in what is known as magnetocrystalline anisotropy, which leads to very high coercivity and also very high energy product. So the structure also helps, crystal structure. Apart from what I was talking about, uh, the atomic orbit interaction, 3D, 4F interactions, this crystal structure also help to get very high coercivity and a high energy product in these magnets. These magnets are processed by photometric technology. We have to melt the alloy of uh, whether uh, direct metal and uh, uh, transition metals in a vacuum because we are uh, dealing with uh, direct, we have to do it in vacuum. Then molten alloy, it will be crushed and then jet milled. Then the milled powder will be put in a magnetic field it will be oriented in one direction and then put it in a vacuum furnace for sintering some of these programs and uh, Professor uh, Ashok Manisar, he knows that uh, some of his students also work with our lab uh, in uh, uh, some of these projects here. So this is the facility which we have created here. So then I just want to say that uh, lessons learned while growing stimulate further growth and lead to performance in the school of life. In my life, magnetics and some magnetic materials was my breadwinner when I started my career in uh, DMRL, took me to different line. So it's, I cannot forget it, uh, learning how it got, did that to grow to this level. And while doing so, inner strength is uh, crucial to growth, external conditions are not. In a desert, you look at it, you have greener uh, plant and then start moving towards that so that you will achieve your thing. So 1980, situation 2021 lockdown effect so we all are uh, going towards this uh, online virtual media mode so i advise all young research scholars please do keep doing the exercise so that uh, we be active and they uh, keep uh, coming years to move forward in our research much faster than what i presented uh, uh, last 10 years work i would like to Acknowledge my team, some of my group, Magnus group, uh, some people working with me on the functional materials team at IIT in this part. I would like to acknowledge and the funding also from various sources I got. So I would like to acknowledge those uh, funding sources also. And this is what uh, our uh, breakthroughs which are emerging out in lithium ion battery and magnets also. This is the pure UV for, for testing trials at uh, Hyderabad, uh, Murthy is there. Uh, Dr. Sarasro is there, Dr. Sadish Reddy, or DRDO bosses are all there. We have given our sales for them to testing. Happy to say that uh, a bigger plant is going to come. Yesterday we signed an MOU uh, online for putting up one gigawatt capacity plant at Hozu uh, for Ensure Power uh, Corporation. So these, uh, all these electric vehicles, apart from batteries, motor is another major thing, where the native mine boron magnet is a key player. And also the soft magnet, which I have not talked about it, which is also ARC is working on it. And this is another breakthroughs uh, in our technology. Uh, Dr. Sivadan Play was instrumental for me to making it uh, to this uh, MOU. We have made uh, e-auto rickshaw at Bangalore to use some of our technologies for retrofit autos. It's been signed and they're also going to come out with their plan. Again, here also motors, magnets are needed. 250 watt to 1 kilowatt capacity motors we need to have magnets apart from batteries. These are stalwarts visited my place. And unfortunately, I would like to say that the Srikwad Banerjee is here. We also lost to him last week. He also passed away. Unfortunately, he visited and really appreciated the effort which I had research for center. We have brought out the energy hub here. So go green before green goes. Thank you very much for all your um, Patience. I am ready to give any answers to all of you. Please. Professor Sidhu, are you with you? Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gopalan, for such a wonderful lecture. I know you have taken us from the basics to the advanced, all advanced state of like uh, topics. So now the floor is open. I know there are around 100 uh, participants. There will be lots from the student side. So the floor is open. Either you can ask questions directly or you can just put it in the chat box also please well, uh, this is not yes. answering yes sir yeah please how are you sir dr gobal nice to see you how are you, how are you? very nice to hear your voice very yes. nice to hear your voice uh, as usual your presentation is always good <laughs>
Well, what Thank is you. The, uh, government planning to extract the neodymium uh, direct metals from the ore available in the country? Why we should still go on importing direct metals from China? Uh, could our principal advisor to the government of India or the DST secretaries could convince the government, the cabinet, for extracting the metal, direct metal from the Indian ore? They, they have to be convinced them that magnet is going to uh, bring out a huge foreign exchange for the country. What is the status now? Yeah. And second question is, what is the maximum energy product we could achieve with the neodymium ion, uh, the rarest permanent magnets, the rarest yeah. ion permanent magnets? Very nice, important question for our country, this uh, rarest metal extraction. Uh, I think that uh, there is a I was, I am in one of these committees with the Niti Ayok as well as the BSU office where I present that. Uh, now the uh, IREL has called for uh, expression of interest from industries okay. for uh, uh, the salt, what they have, neodymium to sodium oxides mm. convert into the metal. There is a recent, uh, there is an uh, expression of interest call has come. Apart from that, BRC has its technology at mm -hmm. large scale to make samarium metal. They are also making neodymium metal. The samarium metal was given to DMRL. DMRL makes the magnet from the metal, usually from imported metal. With this metal, they made it, and the energy product value is on par with imported magnet, uh, imported metals uh, through fabricated. So that technology is now transferred and they are setting up, almost I think set up at uh, Orissa, I think some place, I think forgot the name of the place where the plant is coming up for making up the Samarian cobalt magnets for strategic and aerospace applications. So that is true. So we are going to be self-reliant with the Samarian metal, making Samarian cobalt magnets for the first priority for strategic applications. Second is the neodymium metal technology is also emerging out very well from BRC. And there are other labs like IMMT, Dr. Bosu, director, he also mentioned that they also have extraction of neodymium metal and uh, from secondary sources and other uh, uh, other sources, they are doing it. But this neodymium metal, once it's emerging out, already the expression of interest is given to the industries. So it is going to take up and it's a major mission for country. It's a, a, a bigger mission for country because the requirement is for millions of millions of millions of vehicles motors and we need to really have that's where i'm going to play some role for making a near net ship magnet process one side will process with a metal extraction of neodymium or samarium or tritonium or any other rare same time we need to have cost effective near net ship magnets so that we don't lose the uh, process the, the costly materials so this is being taken up very seriously and uh, going on this is probably in another two, three years, it should be uh, emerging out in the country itself for setting up this plant. For Nedima and Boron and Patni about. Samarian Copot already uh, yeah. real has taken up. And in terms of LD product, um, you know DMR when I was there, he used to make uh, the energy product of uh, 40 MGOE, mega gauss oyster. Oh. But uh, uh, the commercial magnets has about 50 to 55 megagauss oyster. What uh, Dr. Sagawa saw, who invented this magnet, made it. Now I am making a tie up with him. The set of mm -hmm. what I am going to build is uh, from his innovation, invention. So he is going to train us also that trick to get that 50 to 55 mg megagauss oyster mm -hmm. magnets. So probably by this year end or next year, March, we'll be able to demonstrate this high energy neodymium boron magnet to the industries also. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gopalan. Now there is a question from the students. I think we'll just give difference to the students. Minati, you are around? You want to ask yes. a question? Yeah, please. Go yes, ahead. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah please. Sir. Yeah, sir, I'm Minati. Yeah, Minati, my student only. Tell me, Minati. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, can you explain the stability of hard mag magnet and how it is important towards its magnetic property? Stability of? 
like sir uh, like like uh, i work on thorium mn12 type so yes. why this stability is important sir and how it is important to its magnetic property and how during formation how will form that the structure will be stable experimentally okay stability i will tell you there are uh, two stabilities uh, three stabilities one is temperature second is mechanical stability third is phase stability or structural stability i know that you are working on third generation or fourth generation of new or magnets which i have asked you to work on it those magnets the problem is the phase stability ah uh, yes sir you cannot make it a single phase material because they are all line compounds if you try to make a composition of a starting composition for example thorium 2 magnesium 12 composition thorium 1 magnesium 12 composition or thorium 1 magnesium 17 composition you will not be able to achieve it so in order to achieve that stability there is a elements in the periodic table if you look at yes. it titanium zirconium uh, similarly in the earth hafnium some of the rarest you can take those elements to make it the phase stable to make it phase stable in the sense that you will be making the line compound slightly wider open composition okay and yes. also by doing so you will make it structurally stable this is one which i want to say that stability of the structural stability or phase stability a phase stability yeah temperature stability if you want to have temperature stable all these larat magnets except samarium cobalt the neon and boron magnet query temperature is around 316 degrees celsius you need to have high temperature ability that means it has to be stand when the motor temperature goes high the query temperature at least has to be also higher side so you need to have 400 degrees or 450 degrees so you need to look for elements like cobalt if you add you can increase the query temperatures of that by doing so you will be bringing temperature stability in addition to that when you subject varying temperatures minus 60 to plus 60 cyclic temperature variation of these magnets they should deliver the same magnetic flux that means the temperature coefficient of magnetization or the temperature coefficient of coercivity has to be a stable one with respect to the temperatures there should be coefficient value as minimum as possible okay this is temperature stability mechanical stability all these compounds are intermetallic compounds they are likely to break when you handle powerful magnets when you bring it together they will attract much stronger immediately they will heat and it will break so you need to really have stability of these magnets by having some mechanically stable element added to this okay that's why copper copper is also a good ductile material okay add copper it will be they add but little bit copper may not help in mechanical stability but mechanical stability is really an issue when you go for much smaller width of the magnet when you process it for example one mm thickness magnet how do you handle it sector it will break when you assemble it okay these are the, some of the issues mechanical stability is one issue okay other question uh no sir thank you sir thanks a lot yes uh, there is another question from mrs ramya you are around mrs ramya you want to ask the question or let me okay so the question is sir do you have any alternate for dysprosium in hybrid motor if it does what rare earths will it be okay so uh one is uh, dysprosium usually normal magnet use 30% 30% is quite high costly 10 to 30% they use it to avoid it they use for coating technology what i mentioned it they use very 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 small quantity of dysprosium the cost will not be much higher but in order to dispense completely uh, dispose of dysprosium and look for alternate magnet there is another magnet called third generation magnet samarium iron nitride samarium iron nitrogen which has higher purity temperature equivalent to almost close to this flow radium and boron high magnetic crystalline anisotropy which will lead to high coercivity so all the things are new third generation permanent magnet emerging out of course there are a lot of challenges in making stable phase because nitrogen it will escape when you go for high temperature sintering so you have to make it a stable nitride of this magnet that's where the research is going on we are seeing we are also working on it and uh, we are able to achieve to some extent but still getting a square loop 
this is called as an important step for motor applications. So we are working towards that. This is one alternative. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Gopalan, can you stop presenting it so that we can have a full view? Yeah, stop presenting it and uh, yes. Yes. Now, uh, there is a next question from uh, Mr. Vignesh. Are you around? He's a postgraduate student and... Uh, uh, I don't know how much time it's going to take. I am trying to tap industries, like mining industries. Some of the mining industries, they are very interested to go for metal using our technology or DMO technology to make magnets. So if they are showing interest, then it will be a... Uh, they'll boom for our country to meet to the EV challenge. Other thing is that uh, lithium is another problem. We don't have the resources in the country. Only three countries globally, they have the resources lithium. Even though some uh, strange news about availability of lithium in uh, Karnataka, Mandia district, uh, they found that uh, lithium is available in the form of carbonates and uh, sulfides. That is only 6,000 tons, which is uh, not sufficient enough. But uh, otherwise, that's also going to be a, a big problem. So recycling of uh, lithium-ion batteries and uh, so the end of life, how do we recover back? These are the challenges which are being addressed in the uh, electric vehicle uh, technology challenges. So this is, uh, now it's being, I think, opened, I open, and all are uh, moving towards uh, addressing all these issues parallelly now. So before going further, I think uh, I, we have missed uh, uh, Professor Sriman Narayan, uh, Vice Chancellor of Wales University, in giving a short, uh, brief introduction about more number of students have come for this lecture given by Dr. Gopalan. We all feel happy and we are, many questions are there from students. And so let me ask um, Professor Sriman Narayan, because the newcomers are there, a brief introduction or uh, the origin and things like that about the academy so that you know, others know. And then we'll go to what are things. Professor Shiman Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And after a wonderful lecture, I just slightly talk about a little about our academy. Right, right. Actually, this Tamil Nadu, this uh, Academy of Sciences Chennai was originally started in the year 1976 and it was known as earlier as Tamil Nadu Academy of Science. And the main objective of the academy is to review periodically the state of education, research, development and application in various branches of sciences to provide help and guidance to the state government of Tamil Nadu on requests in matters related to science and technology and in addition to arrange for seminars and lectures and other programs for the benefit of the students. So if you look at the constitution of the academy, academics are consists of fellows and honorary fellows who will form the general body of the academy. The administration, direction and management of the efforts of the academy shall be entrusted to the executive council. So in addition to the fellows, we have institutional members and most of the universities from Tamil Nadu, like the University of Madras, uh, Madurai Kamaraj University, Anna University, Manon Maniam Sundaranar University, and institutions like uh, IG Kartal Pakam, IIT Madras Chennai, and CLRI are also institutional members. And we have also associate members like Sri Saraswati Srinivasan Trust and VH Velo. So one of the important aspect of this academy is to recognize the young talents. So we have a program known as Young Scientist Award which is given from the year 2014 and the main purpose of the award is to spot out young talents and so only those who have shown innovative thinking and originality alone are considered for this award and we have put an age limit as 40 years. And it is given in various disciplines like mathematical sciences, physical sciences, chemical sciences, biological sciences, engineering, IT technology. So the two conditions for this award is they should be below 40 years and they should have a minimum for three years in the order. These scientists awards are supported 
partly by Saraswati Srinivasan Trust and partly by Dr. M. Anandakishan Endowment Fund. And each award carries a cash prize of 20,000 with a certificate of merit. In addition to that, the academy conducts summer training program for the benefit of the PG students and especially from the rural background. And this program has aimed to motivate the students to write the CSIR and GATE examination as well as to pursue a career in research. And it has been physically conducted for many years at Chennai and for the last year, from last year onwards due to this pandemic, it has been done through online. And in addition to that, since next select and entrance tests for higher studies are becoming unavoidable, the Academy of Sciences wishes to take steps to enable the students to face these challenges with ease by conducting training programs. In addition to that, we are working both graduate students to conduct or being conducted by the Academy for the past few years and this year also we have we will be conducting the volunteers. So these are the, some of the activities that are being carried out by the academy and the main aim is to help the faculty and the students to acquire more knowledge in their subject of their own interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Sriman Narayan, for the wonderful way in which you have delivered the important uh, salient features of the academy. Maybe. Uh, let me ask Dr. Gopalan, uh, CLRI is an institutional member. IIT, Professor has made IIT to be an institutional member. Uh, what about uh, ARCI? <laughs> I didn't call you <laughs> or compel you, but the point is maybe you can think about it. And, uh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, 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 uh, what is known as uh, the International Relationship Center. Okay, so okay. I like to put forward this uh, uh, request to them for formal clearance from the side. Okay, so okay. it's like a patent member. To become a patent member. Right, right. Okay, no problem. I will. I think I will oh, okay. only uh, push this one. Oh, thank you very much, and uh, we should have active interaction between uh, yeah, your exactly. center. Then that that yeah. that will be good. So justification for. Uh, uh, having the kind of, uh, you know, becoming an okay. institution member. Okay. Yes. Sir. And thank you very much. Um, uh, of all the talks we had so far, we have, we have, now it is four four zero six. We have taken we, your talk was wonderful. It was very nice and uh, very importantly, um, there are questions from youngsters that I uh, very much uh, we welcome the youngsters to gain. And there, there are a number of lectures and it uh, makes us. Uh, much happier and it is a very 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 nice talk um, thank you very much and uh, now um, um, uh, our uh, uh, dr jay pros jayvel former director of kusoko center and uh, now the nanometal the center he will propose a lot of thanks thank you Pradeep. thank you sir uh, on behalf of the academy of sciences chennai and on my own behalf uh, let me thank uh, uh, Dr. Gopalan for the very exhaustive lecture today and uh, he has almost covered uh, four different areas starting from uh, 18th century electric vehicles to emerging electric vehicles at this scenario and also touched upon uh, the other areas like thermoelectrics and batteries and uh, he also gave a very fundamental, very uh, uh, strong uh, um, activities on the magnetism and magnetic materials and uh, in fact uh, we know each other for the past 20-25 uh, years we had a very memorable uh, stay at uh, National Institute for Material Science in Japan and um, in fact uh, at the time he was uh, both uh, Dr. Kubusami and uh, Gopalan were the senior uh, researchers when we were all very young and uh, before we go for a group presentation or the, the seminar in Japanese uh, conferences, we used to take uh, tips from these people. And uh, there was a very strong uh, magnetic uh, group in, in NIMS, like uh, Professor P.S. Mundi, uh, Gopalan, and um, uh, Professor Kupusami. In fact, uh, um, uh, my host uh, and also Professor Rajendran host, you know, Nishimura-san, 
he used to tell you know when we all had a tea or coffee together and he used to say you know that magnetic mafia is sitting there <laughs> <laughs> all these people are very strong in magnetism and uh, that is what they used to call us very jovially so that was the thing but he has now uh, getting the very big laboratory and uh, working very closely to the industries i am sure that uh, his uh, talk was uh, very immensely useful for the young researchers and those who are interested in taking up this research in this domain so with this uh, let me thank all the participants and uh, a special thanks to professor narayan sami who is joining today for our uh, lecture oh he uh, is not doing that oh. yeah yeah he was here since oh, uh, he started oh. yeah. okay 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 and uh, so i take uh, i thank the president uh, professor um, uh, r asok muni sir and uh, vice president secretary joint secretary and also the tireless effort of professor kumar for organizing these seminars every week and uh, I, uh, it is a very continuous uh, moral strength to the academy and to reach the youngsters uh, for organizing this uh, seminar every saturday at 2 o'clock uh, and it has become very useful and i hope uh, this will go in a long way uh, to strengthen the activities of the academy uh, but uh, 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 finally i thank all the participants uh because their participation is a motivation for the speaker as well as uh, for the academy to continue this uh, practice so uh, i i request all the participants to reserve your calendar from 2 to 4 every week saturday <laughs> so that uh, we will have a very um, uh, strong interaction among the senior faculty like uh, professors and also young students yeah, thank you uh, Uh, i hope uh, that uh, uh, we'll have a next lecture and uh, uh, next saturday uh, i take this opportunity welcome all of you to join for the next uh, week's lecture professor kumar will decide the speaker and uh, things with this uh, let me thank for this opportunity and thank you one and all thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank you very much for all of you So thank young you. students will uh, go to yeah see. Thank you, Professor David. We call it your life at uh, Japan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are visiting your life. Sir, this is thank you, sir. This was the first time we had more than hundred, so we could not hmm. accommodate many people. Yes, it was the first time. Maybe we should think about how to start with. Uh, And also, many so students will be more than hundred participants. So right. many of them uh, sent messages to me right. asking if they can be admitted, and uh, I think right. we should right. solve right. the problem. Right. Uh, and I think, and uh, the students will be uh, highly motivated, and they, they can try for uh, doing projects and things like that. That uh, that's a nice output of uh, today's talk. Thank you. 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 Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Balan. Many thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank